Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the October 10th, 2020 edition of Pro Wrestling Throwdown. This is Luke the Big Dog Williams. I'm Caleb Black, our in-studio producer, the mighty Max Fury. And it is time for the NXT TakeOver 31 pay-per-view post-show review. Say that five times fast. Pick the, the pickle pepper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what a show was NXT TakeOver 31. We opened with the Damian Priest versus Johnny Sameface, or the North American title, Johnny Gargano. Um... Damien Priest is starting to grow on me. <laughs> <laughs> he slapped his leg a lot less in this match. Uh, it's because Gargano shut him down every time he tried. <laughs> but uh, I did see him slap his leg off of. You know, he runs in the corner. And he, he always does. Back he always Watch. slaps his legs because he's because he's indie riffic. He's just the indiest riffiest. I don't. That there's a word for that. that. There's a word. You know what? You pick a word for it. Pointless. Pointless. That's a good word. I know. Uh, it was a good match. It was a fantastic match. You know, match. It, it really... Damian Priest is 6'7", right? 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, He's up there. And Johnny Gargano's like 5'10". Yeah. Uh, if it, that... It, where it heels, really yeah. showed how... the Just the size difference in that match was. Oh, yeah. And Damian Priest had a lot of big slams. Ended in definitively... Uh, I think the best bump of the whole match... Was uh, they were on the apron, or well, the, Gargano the, was on the floor, Priest was on the apron, and he grabs Priest's arm between his legs and yanks him, so he has to make that front bump onto yeah. the ground on the outside. Yeah, that was vicious. Fantastic uh, spot. The yeah. razor's edge to the to the apron. Yeah, even though, <sighs> look, I understand. I've been in this <laughs> business for a long time. So have you. So is Maximus. I understand the bump. I understand having to take the bump the right way. Yeah. Do not tighten up before the bump. If I can see you getting ready to take the bump, it takes the magic away from Now, I agree with that. And also... And he, he did that whole tuck. You know, kind of like when they go up for the splash and they come down and you see them throw their arms up like this? Yeah. I hate that. I also... I get, like... I get that, oh, the bump looks harder because it's on the, because it's on the apron and not in the ring, but use the fucking ring. Just take your bumps in the ring. I don't want to hear... I, I don't want to hear it unless they're taking power bombs. Like Sami Zayn used to take from Kevin Owens on the corner of the ring. I don't want to hear you cry and complain. Just take it in the ring. Just Don't take, it take in the bumps ring. on the concrete, pussies. No, but that's what I'm telling them not to do that. Like, just yeah, use your I'm, ring. I'm agreeing. Yeah, you. use your ring. Uh, Good match, though. Uh, solid cheap. three. Yeah, yeah. wise it's there's just there's not enough room on the apron. It's really dangerous. It, it looks no point. clunky. Just take it. You know, well, it's, it's also been hard. done. And I know that, once again, I know the bump yeah. looks harder on the apron, and uh, all the smart marks are, oh, uh, that's the hardest part of the ring. Okay, but I would rather see you fucking, if you're going to do a really big, hard power bomb, why not start out in the turnbuckle, walk that motherfucker to the middle of the ring, and just let him have it? My the thing aesthetics is, is what they're missing. If you're not Big E doing a splash, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Or Bron Reed, uh, Bronson. Bronson. Bron Reed Bronson, right? That's his name? Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed. Okay, I knew that I was having... Reed Bronson, something. if you're looking at like this <laughs> high school right. know, grades and stuff. Uh, Velveteen Dream and Kushida. Velveteen Dream coming dressed as Doc Brown from Back to the Future is fantastic. The match itself wasn't bad, but it was Velveteen Dream screaming after... By the way, I did call Kushida being a heel. I just called it way too early because he yeah. turned heel after we attacked Velveteen did Dream. Did he really? Yes. Did he well, really guess, turn heel, though? Yeah, no. Uh, but, like, the Velveteen just screaming and crying after the attack, just so hokey, took me completely out of it. See, I only gave the match a two, and, and the reason I only gave it a two... I mean, I, I, I dig the physicality between the two guys. Yeah. But again, yeah, the screaming, like we know it hurts, and there's a, a fine line between projecting pain and being hokey and, and being overselling hokey. it. Yeah, uh, whatever. It, that I just don't see how you can turn heel beating up on Velveteen Dream. I also don't see how you can turn heel. Which, if again, I, it might just be my old school mentality, but I feel like a heel has to be a big enough to be a bully. Right. You know what I mean? It's got to be either that or it's got to be someone who thinks he's better than you. Someone who can talk down to you. Someone who can make you feel inferior. Right, Max. And the idea that the idea that uh, that someone, Kushida, his size, who doesn't speak our language natively. What do you want, Caleb? Oh, I just said hi. Hi? No. Um, doesn't speak our tongue natively. 
doesn't make for a very strong heel, in my opinion. Damien Priest is the perfect example of what a heel could be. That voice, right. that size, right. the way he carries himself. Look at how handsome Max is. He's just, he's just a handsome monkey. Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously, he's yeah. right well, there. Yeah, well, he was, you're, he was you're just a, there over your shoulder. A monkey too, okay? He was just over your shoulder. There's, what there is talking? nothing I over, way over here the whole is there time. Something I, over I, will rewind, I will rewind the tape. And Max was just... I, you know what? what I'm, not having, I'm not having this argument today. I didn't say anything. Okay, little comments below. Velveteen Dream and Kushida had an okay match. Uh, eh. Candice LeRae and Iho Shirai. See, mm. there he is again. He's right there. I don't see what you're... Whatever. I don't the hell is I, look, with you. There's nobody else here. I didn't what are you drinking? Time, I, it's, wa it's water. How can it's, I even get over there? empty bottle of water. Uh... I don't know, man. Candice LeRae versus Io Shirai for the NXT Women's Could have done without it. And it's not even that it was a bad match. It just, number one, it was a match with very little build-up. They did a couple of weeks' worth of promos and stuff, but it wasn't... <sighs> I don't care. For me to get invested in a really solid women's program and a really solid women's match, I need to be invested. If the writers aren't going to invest the time to keep them as the top hills on NXT, how am I supposed to? Yeah, and uh, Io Shirai is one of the best women's wrestlers in the business, and she's a great NXT champion. Right. I just didn't care about this match. Me either. Uh, Pablo Escobar, no. Santos... <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Santos okay. Escobar Unprofessional. successfully defends the Cruiserweight Championship against uh -huh. Isaiah Swerve Scott. Good athletic match. Decent little match. Uh, Santos Escobar, again, textbook heel. And you see, in, in the vein of him being heel, it works. He can use his nationality and the way he speaks to you, because he's not necessarily a big guy either. But in the Cruiserweight division, he can be a bully. Now, should he be allowed to go and bully someone like you know, Bronson Reed or Damian Priest or Finn Balor? No. No. But in this context, he's a perfect heel. He's a great worker. And the match was pretty good. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, of course, I've, I've always been a fan of the uh, of the Cruiserweight titles anyway, like yeah. the matches. Yeah. I always think that they... I don't want to say they try they try harder, but they do. Yeah. It comes off like they yeah, try they harder. It comes off like they put more... It almost reminds me nowadays, not not the two hundred five live junk that they started with. It kind of reminds me nowadays of more or less like the X division was in the early days of TNA. Yeah, agreed. And I think that they're they Santos is being booked very very strong. He's a good representative of the division. Right. Now. And uh, I don't know who I foresee taking the belt off of him in NXT, but I don't think whoever it is should do it for a little while. No, I think you should ride it out as long yeah. as you can. Now let's talk about this fucking main event. Finn Balor versus Kyle O'Reilly for the NXT Championship. Wow. Yeah, oh my god. They beat the hell out of each other. Yeah, no. Uh, I don't even really know where to begin. Yeah, it, The match was hard-hitting from beginning to end. It was textbook. They they utilized their athleticism and they told a story. It was entertaining. It wasn't it wasn't slow and methodic or prodding or insulting. Right. It was a fight. Gar uh, Kyle O'Reilly looked like he was getting his ass kicked for most of the because match. Because he was. He finally gets that fire. Finally gets that big baby face comeback. See, look, Max is even adhering to social distancing protocols. Be sure to wear your masks, kids. Um, what are you talking about? about? He. I don't. I don't see anything. I don't he understand. was just there. Anyway. The Finn Balor Kyle O'Reilly. Sorry, dude. Hard hitting. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what else to say. And, well, first off, when when the match ends, the early. Yeah. Because thirty minutes is early. Right. When the match ends early, because one guy's got four broken teeth and the other dude has his jaw broken two places. Yeah. Sold. Yeah. There were both bloody fucking messes bleeding out of their mouths. And if you notice, that knee that ends up crushing Balor's jaw, as soon as O'Reilly does the dismount and Balor takes his comeback for the coup de grace, you can see Balor's jaw just immediately start yeah. to swell up. Uh, My favorite was the, the, the turnaround Savat kick. Yeah. Well, it, like uh, O'Reilly's in getting his, getting his shit in, and he takes that kick and he reaches back like he's going to hit Balor, and he just got. Oh, the liver kick, yeah. Yeah, where he just kind of waves yeah. him off. Now, the beautiful, part of, the beautiful part about that is just like, no one uses a liver shot in wrestling to sell. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? No one yeah. does that. And so they really rooked it. Like, it 
The match was so good. It was so hard hitting. I really enjoyed it. Probably one of the top five matches of the whole year. I'm so going to say match of the year. Yeah, so I, I can think of very few that rival it in terms of storytelling, in terms of brutality. Also, I'm going to call it at the underdog match yeah. of the year because no one saw that coming. Yeah, no, uh, I even said I'm not completely sold on Kyle O'Reilly. Well, we had both talked about we thought that it would be a better match if it was Roderick Strong. I yes. We did that last yeah. week. Um, I'll eat my words. Uh, it was yeah, fantastic. It was, it was incredible. And then what do you think about the, the post-moach post -moach, Jesus, what's wrong with me? We moach sometimes. Post-match angle with Ridge Holland coming and dumping Adam Cole's body. What a waste. Well, well yeah, because we'll get into... We'll get into that yeah. when we do the recap of This Week in Wrestling. What a waste. Uh, speaking of This Week in Wrestling, that's what's coming up. You all know what to do. Let us know your thoughts from NXT TakeOver 31. Either by finding us on Facebook at facebook.com slash pro wrestling throwdown. Send us an email at pro wrestling throwdown at gmail.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. The week's wrestling recap is coming up right now. Don't understand. I, there's a fucking monkey. I don't, there's a mat. I don't see 